the experiences. Nadine, it's a very your interesting views. Well, Here, um, this is Nadine Doris, she's and she's talking on Laura Quensberg about the death of her husband. But not everybody has a family, or his next of kin is the family, or friends. For many people, the next of kin is the state, mm. and that that number in this country is a large number of people, and that concerns me. But my own my own story is my husband was diagnosed with stage four bowel cancer and given four months to live. And the very first thing he wanted to do was contact Dignitas. In fact, we had an argument within hours of his diagnosis because he was Googling Dignitas and absolutely angrily determined. Because in his mind, he said, I don't want to have a painful death. I don't want to, I've only got four months, I've got to sort this now. What happened was, the, my daughters and I, we just, we all of us for four months nursed him at home together with amazing support from the community nurses. He ended up on a morphine syringe driver, and before he passed, quietly, without any pain, he said, this has been the best four months of my life because we had such a wonderful time. And, the and you know, I, I, I know I've sometimes been very critical of Nadine Doris, um, but this, this is such an emotional piece. It's such a personal piece, and what she's saying is... I think very relevant to the debate that people may feel they want to um, opt out for some sort of um, some sort of early death when they're given a diagnosis like bowel cancer. Uh, when I was diagnosed with bowel cancer, I was told I I had either a, a stage three or a stage four. In fact, it turned out to be operable, and I'm very grateful for that and in fact the the cancer hadn't spread beyond the um colon and I, I was incredibly lucky but i certainly thought that my time had come and what what i find so touching about this story is how nadine's voice sort of almost breaks with the emotion when she's recounting uh, the moment that her husband died and how he died peacefully surrounded by people who loved him. But she started off by saying that many, many people, not everybody has a family, so the state can make these decisions about what happens at the end of life. And, um, and, and, and she says how her husband, before he died, said these were, the last, these were the best four months of my life. You know, he's very grateful. And Nadine and her daughters worked very hard, I'm sure, to nurse him during his final moments. Let's, let's hear to how she finishes. There's lots of laughter and lots of good times. And he completely changed his mind when he came to the point of dying about having ever wanted to have gone to, as, as what he couldn't, you have to sign up for Dignitas a long time before, but he was absolutely determined. If somebody had given him the option and those first days and said to him, yes, you can do this, I think he would have done it. It was only by the fact that he realised by, by a gentle persuasion mm. and by a lot of love surrounding him that there is another way. And he went so peacefully that you know, we are forever grateful that he changed his mind on that. Jonathan, uh, you're a brother. Is, is, isn't that an extraordinary story? And I, I know, as I say, I know people think that I... I have this obsession with Nadine Doris. I think her, I, I've read all her books, by the way. I read all her books while I was recovering from my own cancer operation. I read all of them. The Children of the Little Lanes or what is, whatever it is, <laughs> the lot. And she is very much a page turner. And more recently, I read The Plot. And then a couple of days ago, I read Downfall. Um, Downfall is not a great book. But... Um, you know, the fact that I criticise somebody doesn't mean that I actually dislike them. Uh, I, I, I really don't. I dislike many of the things that Nadine Doris stands for, and I dislike the fact that when she had an opportunity to do something good in government, she didn't. And in fact, she did a certain amount of harm. Uh, I ridicule the fact that her, her, her devotion to Boris Johnson, um, I think with good reason. But I salute what she did for her husband here, and I salute her her strength in telling this story on television, um, on live television, in real time. And I think it's a very 
it, 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 it's a very important story contributing to the debate. People make a decision and then they regret it if there's time. Um, so the fact that you think, I just don't want to... You know, it's... Um, uh, Robin Williams said that suicide was a was a decision that you that you make hastily and then you regret um, as as it's happening it's um, it's a uh, I, I think if we can provide good end of life care then this is a positive thing I think the negative things are when people have actually made that decision and persuaded their family to help them carry it out, um, maybe by going to Dignitas or whatever, and the police or the state gets involved in uh, pursuing the family at the same time that they're dealing with the grief of losing a loved one in such a difficult situation. I think we need to make sure that law and those um, laws are handled significantly more um, sensitively. And I think we need to um, ensure that our end of life care is better. The problem is our NHS is at breaking point and what is on offer in the NHS simply isn't up to scratch. And I don't trust it. And it's not that I don't trust the doctors or the nurses or the cleaners. I don't trust the bureaucrats. The paperwork that I have had from the NHS has been confusing and contradictory. I asked for copies of my paperwork uh, not so long ago from my GP, and what I got was completely different paperwork, which in fact suggested I had a T1. I've now found the original pa paperwork. I've managed to clean it of the blood, and I can confirm that the paperwork is the the original paperwork that I had was quite clear in its assessment of the cancer that I was facing and I find it shocking that the bureaucrats can spend so much time changing information why are they assuming that I'm going to be litigious or or that I'm going to find fault with the... Are they assuming that simply because I survived, I'm going to get angry with them? Um, I survived. I'm very grateful. And, um, you know, when you go through those diagnoses, it's very harrowing. And one must be very grateful for a supportive family and supportive friends. I am. And I think it's immensely, immensely touching to, to hear the story of Nadine Doris.